Hey there everyone, welcome to lesson 3 of theme 2 GCSE Geography. What we're going to be moving on to today is looking at something called counter urbanisation. Now it's a very long word so we're going to break it down into pieces to help us understand what it's actually talking about. Counter, what does counter mean? Think of counterclockwise for example. It means to go the other way or it means the opposite. Urban is a built up area. Urbanisation is the growth of a built up area because people and businesses are moving in, so the urban area starts expanding. So if urbanisation is the growth of a town or city because people are moving in, counter urbanisation is people and businesses moving out of the city. So what's happening is, for some reason, people are leaving Cardiff and moving to the nearby rural village of Llantwit Major. What we're going to do is construct the definition of some new key terms and we're going to identify the factors that are pushing people out of Cardiff and pulling them into Clantwit Major and then we'll evaluate the impact of this movement of people and businesses into the rural village on the people and the structures and everything that was in that rural village already. So pause the video here a moment, go ahead and write down the new title. Okay, so first of all, what even is the meaning of counter urbanization? So I just talked about it briefly there. Here's a little illustration to help you get your head around it. So what's happening is, so far we've always talked about the CBD as being full of high-end, high-paid jobs, pubs, bars, clubs, restaurants. There's lots of great things about living in the CBD. We've also talked about, though, the fact that the CBD can be very overcrowded, noisy, congested. There can be antisocial behavior. So there's downsides to the CBD too. And if you're running a business in the CBD, your office rent and your land rent is probably very, very high. So what's starting to happen, <laughs> super high tech animation, I know, is people and businesses are leaving the CBD, they're leaving the town, the urban area, and they're moving to the urban rural fringe or into the, to the rural area that surrounds the city. This is what counter urbanization is, okay? So put down counter urbanization dash the process of people and businesses moving away from urban areas to smaller settlements in rural areas. Pause the video here a minute and do that please. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the push factors of the city. Why are people leaving the city? So, the case study we're going to use is people leaving Cardiff and going to Tlantwit Major. Now, Tlantwit Major is a, um, a medium-sized rural village that's just 22 miles southwest of Cardiff. So it is within Cardiff's commuter belt. That means that if you wanted to live in Tlantwit Major, but still keep your high-powered job in Cardiff, high-paid professional job in Cardiff, you could absolutely do that. It would be about a 40-minute commute to back and forth between home and work. So we're just outside Cardiff. So people are leaving Cardiff because of the urban nightmare, in inverted commas. So we factors that make people want to leave an area, we call those push factors. It's pushing people out of the city. So put a subheading, push factors from the city, and then make a little bullet point list of these things as we go through them. So first off, because the CBD, the, the urban area is so crowded, what housing there is tends to be very, very expensive. You've either got high-end, really expensive apartments. If there is some proper housing, it might be terraced, then it's probably very, very expensive. We're talking about the right in the middle of the CBD. So, in London's case, some of those one bedroom apartments, you'd be paying over a quarter of a million. In Swansea's case, some of the top floor apartments, possibly uh, Salubrious Passage, for example, so out the back of um, Coggers Lane, they're just off Wine Street, you'd probably pay for the top floor one bed apartment there easily 150 to 170,000 pounds. 170,000 pounds in Lacquer would buy you a three bed semi detached home. So, you're not getting much space and much house for your money in the CBD. It's a very, very expensive zone to live in. Furthermore, because this is where most of the high paid jobs are and most of the opportunities and the nightlife and the social life, you get a lot of traffic congestion. So that's going to mean air pollution, which adds to people's respiratory issues and lowers their quality of life. And it's also going to mean noise pollution, which will also lower quality of life. Antisocial behaviour, we've talked about this before. Um, 
there's a lot of theft in the CBD, there's a lot of drunk and antisocial behaviour late at night in the CBD, so this could certainly be a push factor as it would lower your quality of life. And finally, this is quite a controversial one, is social changes. So over the years, immigration has been increasing into the large cities around Britain, Swansea included, and this is a positive thing in many, many ways. So think of all our different um, takeaway foods we have now, different musical cultures, different traditions and religions, and we all share this, this rich culture now. But on the flip side of that, it can sometimes create friction within city communities that you hear it all the time, there's this stigma of immigrants coming in taking our jobs, immigrants this, immigrants that. Nine times out of ten it's not the case, but it's portrayed that way in the media, people talk about it that way on social media, and so you get this stigma attached to immigration and social demographic changes, and that can cause a lot of friction in city areas and lead to areas of ethnic minorities becoming quite deprived and there being a lot of gang crime and gang culture there and that then leads and feeds back into the crime rate issue that we just talked about. So people are leaving because the houses are too expensive, there's lots of traffic congestion which causes air pollution and noise pollution, the crime rate is high and there's a lot of racial tension due to social changes. And this creates something called the urban nightmare. People don't want to live in the city anymore. It, the shine has sort of worn off from when they probably first moved there as a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed young graduate fresh out of university or fresh out of college taking advantage of the high-paid jobs in the CBD and the kind of happy hour and the nightlife and all the social things that it had to offer that started to wear off a little bit. People don't want to be there anymore. So instead they're leaving cities like Cardiff and they're going to nearby rural villages. So in the case of the example we are looking at, it would be into Llantwit Major, just 22 miles to the southwest. Put a subheading, who is moving to the rural areas and why? So the factors that are pulling people into the countryside, we call those pull factors. So the people that tend to be leaving, you'll hear a lot of people that argue that the class system doesn't exist anymore. Um, and to some extent, the boundaries between the classes have been broken down. But if you were going to attach a label to the people that are moving from the city to the countryside, it's your middle class families. Either your young professional couples looking to start a family, your young professional moderate to high income couples that are starting a family wanting to leave the city. You've also got second homeowners and this creates a lot of tension in the rural area because if you buy a holiday home, you're only going to be in it for a few weeks of the year. It's either then empty the rest of the year or you let it out to tourists and that creates a lot of friction with rural homeowners and people that already lived in that, in that countryside village. And you have retired couples. The reasons are fairly obvious. It's going to be nice and peaceful, nice and quiet, nice and safe. So bullet point, those are the groups of people. That's the demographic that are moving to Clantwit Major. And these are the reasons why. Aspirations, dreams, ideas of a quiet country life. I'll move out to the countryside, we'll get a few chickens, we can have our own eggs, a nice little stone cottage with original features, that whole, the rural idyll, the rural dream. As we looked at with decline of services, I think that's next lesson actually, if you go too far into the countryside, you'll find that services like mobile phone connections and internet connections are absolutely terrible. But they are improving in rural areas and that improved phone and internet access means that businesses can be run from home in the countryside now, that teenagers and families don't feel so isolated because they've got better mobile phone signal and better Wi-Fi, better internet signal. So those services and connections and communication networks are improving so you feel less isolated if you move out there. You've also got the fact that in Clantwit Major's case, it's a really easy commute into Cardiff. Like I was saying, you can hop straight on the M4 or straight down the A48, you can get to jobs um, in the city centre of Cardiff. So you can keep your high paid, high powered job, but have the nice country quiet lifestyle. You can have the best of both worlds due to easy commuting road networks. You've also got that other services as well as telephone and internet signal are also improving in rural areas. So you tend to have maybe a little skate park popping up, a leisure centre, GP surgeries, things like that, that make life in the countryside far more easy. And finally, 
it's a nice place to live. In Flanthrop Major's case, you've got the Glamorgan Heritage Coast right on your doorstep, and the homes that you're living in and surrounded by are traditional stone cottages, it's farmland, it's animals, it's peace and quiet. It's that attractive village townscape and local countryside environment. So you can summarise these a little bit if you wish, but where you've just bullet pointed who is moving to the countryside, also bullet point the pull factors, the reasons why they are moving to the countryside. Okay, so you've got all these people and businesses, because land rent will be cheaper in rural areas than it is in the CBD, people and businesses moving out to the countryside. And here's some, some images to help you visualise the pull factors we were just talking about. So you've got all these, what were probably cow sheds and barns now converted into traditional homes. It's all very aesthetically pleasing, that kind of traditional country life. Um, a two bed apartment in one of these kind of newer develop one of these newer developments, sorry, would set you back £190,000. So a detached home in this development, you'd be talking probably approaching £400,000 at least. So expensive modern planned estates that are built out of nice brickwork, so it's in keeping a little bit with the surrounding area, are also being built to deal with the increasing demand for housing as more and more people are moving into Flantwit Major. Here's an example of an image from the Glamorgan Heritage Coastline. So you're living by the seaside, basically, if you move to Flantwit Major, but still keeping your high paid, high powered job in the CBD. It's the best of both worlds. So what that creates is a phenomenon called suburbanization. Urbanization is the growth of a town or city. But because of counter-urbanisation, people are leaving the town and city and going to the suburbs. They're going to the urban rural fringe, the suburbs and the countryside. And that causes those rural areas to grow. So urbanisation is the growth of an urban area. Suburbanisation is the growth of a rural, smaller village as more and more people and businesses move in from the urban areas. So put a little star in your margin or something and write suburbanization dash and put down this meaning please now of course as you can imagine as more and more people and more and more businesses move into Clantwit Major move into a nice little stone built villagey kind of area it's going to lose the whole feel that people are moving there for in the first place all of a sudden you've got Tesco Extra opening up, you might have a spa and another petrol station and newer in estates are being built, like we just looked at that. You know, they look nice, but they're not traditional like the rest of the village. So it starts to lose its country feel, its village feel, and the village community starts to break down. In the, ter in, um, the case of Flantwit Major, you don't need to write these facts and figures down, but it's just to give you an idea of how much it's grown by in a relatively short space of time. So Flantwit Major has seen significant suburbanisation since the 70s. So we're in 2020 now, so we're talking only 40, 50 years. In the 60s, there were about 4,000 people living in Flantwit Major. By 2011, it was more than double that, 9,500 people. In the 1960s, there was about 1,000 homes there. By 2011, it was more than, well, just under four times that. And there are five and a half thousand cars or vans in the area, the majority of which belong to people that commute to Cardiff. Okay, so we've got a lot more traffic, a lot more houses, a lot more people, and the traffic and people are, in inverted commas, city folk. <laughs> They, they still work in the city, but they want to live in the countryside. So all of this suburbanization as a result of counter-urbanization has led to the growth of Flantwit Major. So in 1897, Flantwit Major was just that bit. Okay, to give you your bearings, that road there, so that curve of it there, is that curve of it there, okay? So in the 1890s, it was just this sort of little area here. By 2007, the equivalent of that on this map would be about that area. Yeah, about that much. Okay. 
but you can see now we've also got extra here all of this extra here and it's starting to spread down this way as well so that rural village has spread outwards suburbanization and what that means is all these extra people and all these extra businesses are going to impact upon that rural village of Llantwit Major. Socially, it's going to affect the people that already live there. Economically, it's going to affect the job opportunities and the money in the area. And environmentally, obviously, it's going to have an impact, all these extra vehicles and all this extra development. Take a whole page turn sideways, put a heading, Impacts of counter urbanization on Llantwit Major, and draw out this table taking the whole page. Obviously the factors column here, this only needs to be skinny, these need to be much wider because we're going to fill them with bullet points together. Can I just stress, we are not talking here about the effect of counter urbanization on Cardiff. We're not talking about people leaving Cardiff and that that might cause depopulation in some zones of Cardiff and, and what have you. We're focusing on Llantwit Major. These extra people and extra businesses coming in how will that affect the existing area and the existing residents in that countryside village? Okay, so pause the video here a moment. Go ahead and take a sideways page and set this up, please. Okay, so to save you having to print off too many resources, I'm just sort of going to walk you through it on the slides rather than give you sheets to print out and highlight and summarise. So if we look at the social impact first, young homeowners and the community, imagine you are the son or daughter of um, a rural farmer, your family have lived in Tlantwick Major for generations, you're growing up on your farm, you're getting to an age where you're going to think about buying your own home. What problems might you come across trying to buy a home in Llantwit Major now? You've got people from the city buying up the homes to live in. You've got people from the city buying up the homes as holiday homes and second homes. What's that going to do to the price of houses in the area when more and more people want them? Exactly. When the demand for something goes up, the price goes up. Okay, so what will start to happen is first-time buyers that have lived in the area their whole lives won't be able to afford to buy a home in the area they grew up in. They're going to be forced to leave. What also happens quite often is it creates what's called a commuter village. So the people that are moving in from Cardiff and buying up all the homes, they're not there most of the time. They're working in the city and driving back and forth. So they don't really contribute to the local community. They don't go to the local pub. They don't go to the local shop. They'll pop to the local bar for happy hour after work before they drive home. Or they'll stop at the big Tesco on the way out of Cardiff rather than pop to the local shop. They'll stop at the big Tesco on their way home. This commuter village effect means that the village community sort of breaks down because all the people that are moving in aren't joining in. They're not contributing to local traditions and local community. All the extra traffic, air pollution, adds it, it will cause a decline in quality of life for people with respiratory issues like asthma and in general you're just going to get a lot of friction between the people moving in from the city and the people that already live there in the countryside so it can cause a breakdown in community so there's the point about the demand for housing increasing the house prices and villagers being forced out more traffic more air pollution now you'll notice here i haven't got more tra uh, more traffic more air pollution climate change because we're just focusing on social for now. We can repeat that starter in environmental, but finish it with climate change. As more people move from the city, move in, this means the community becomes more multicultural. So that should be a good thing. It will enrich the community with other traditions and ideas and beliefs, but that can also cause conflict, that idea of commuter villages that I was just talking about. And finally, if the homes are being bought up as second homes or holiday homes, they're empty for half the time. And then when they are rented out to tourists, quite often tourists come into the area and they drop litter and they're not very considerate of the locals and that's going to cause even more friction. Now then, for goodness sake, don't write this word for word into your boxes for the social. Summarise as best you can. So we have got a couple of, so a couple of social advantages here. 
this multicultural idea, sharing ideas, sharing cultures, sharing traditions, it should enrich the community. On the other hand though, this one, this one, this one, this one are all negatives. Pick, a, pick two maybe of the negatives and summarise them into your negative social box. Okay, so let's move on to look at, I think it's economic next, yeah, businesses and jobs. So businesses are moving into the rural area from the city. This is going to provide more job opportunities for locals so they can earn more money to support their family and that will improve their standard of living. But to make room for more businesses, because it's a rural area, you're at risk of destroying greenfield sites to build office space, warehouse space, whatever. What they've actually done in the case of Clantwit Major is they've built on a brownfield site. Now it's rare that there are brownfield sites in rural areas, but there's actually an old World War II um, aircraft space, um, airfield, that's the word I'm looking for. There's an old World War II airfield just outside Clantwit Major, and they've actually redeveloped a lot of the hangars there to be used for warehouses for businesses. So when we look at economic, that industrial area, the Flandau Industrial Estate, it's just outside Flantwit Major by only about three kilometres. So it's providing more jobs, locals can earn more money, more disposable income, better standard of living. Um, and the people that are moving in, they've got high powered, high paid jobs in the city. So they've got plenty of spare cash to spend in the area if these jobs, if these industries start opening up and these shops start opening up. But the increased affluence, the increased wealth of the area, as it's these type of people moving in, will drive up the cost of living. Local shops and local cafes will cotton on and they'll put their prices up because these people are willing to pay it. And that makes things very expensive for locals. Okay. So, when it comes to the econ economic side of things, the majority of the impact is positive. More jobs, because businesses move in, and it tends to be high income people that are moving in. So they're gonna spend more money in the area overall. But this could mean that prices get put up and locals will find it hard to afford the increased cost of living. So pause here a moment and summarise these into your table. Okay, so just to help you visualise what I'm talking about with Landau Industrial Estate, here is the old uh, telecommunications um, station that used to coordinate the sort of flights and planes taking off and landing. Um, uh, the traffic control tower, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> and it's now the industrial estate trading office. It's the main site office. Okay. There's a, there was a Ford dealership selling cars. Provides jobs, makes money for the local economy. The old aircraft hangars have been turned into the place for homes. is an old um, furniture store. So again, creates jobs. People spend more money in the area. And luckily, from an environmental point of view, because they'd recycled the airfield, they didn't destroy more habitats. They used a brownfield site. So that's a positive from an environmental point of view. But the demand is going to be such that you will have to destroy some greenfield sites. And that's going to mean habitat loss and species decline, even though some of it was on a brownfield site. And like I referred to earlier, increasing population means more congestion, more air pollution, but in this case, because we're focusing on environmental, instead of saying increased air pollution, respiratory issues, quality of life, we're going to go increased air pollution, adding to climate change. So pause the video here a moment and go ahead and summarise those into your table as well. Okay, and that brings us to the end of lesson three, brownfield versus greenfield. What we're going to move on to next is, what we've looked at here is people moving to rural villages within the commuter belt of a successful city. So you can have the rural country lifestyle without feeling too isolated. You've still got good services, you've still got good mobile phone and internet connection, and you're still within commuting distance of driving to that high paid, high powered job in the city.
What we're going to look at next is if you move way into the rural area, so outside of the commuter belt into far deeper countryside, for example um, with the Gower Peninsula, if you moved all the way to Rossilli, for example, what would your life be like? What would the service provision in the area be like? What would your mobile phone signal be like? The buses, the this, the that, the other, and how would that impact upon the people that live there? So in the meantime, if you have any questions, as usual, gleasona at hubcumry.net. Otherwise, I'll see you soon for lesson four. Well done.